Hello again, my name's John, I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. And in this one I'll be making this stunning, very crispy and delicious tiger bread. And if you follow the recipe carefully, it's quite easy to make. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll start the recipe by setting the yeast away. This is mainly to show that the yeast is alive and well. To the warm water I'll add the sugar and the yeast and give that a good mix until it's all dissolved. Now I'm using instant dried yeast but you can use active dried or even fresh if you prefer. If you are using fresh yeast you'll need 20 grams dissolved in exactly the same way as I'm doing here. Ok I'll let that sit in the sink of warm water until I know it's active and alive and well. If you don't see any activity after 10 minutes your yeast is dead and it needs replacing. Now I'll be using my stand mixer for this recipe, so at this stage I'll add the salt to the flour and mix it in. Right, I'm all set up and ready to go. And as you can see, the yeast is alive and well. So I'll add that to the bowl first. Make sure you scrape it all out of the jug. Next I'll add the oil to the mixer. Now I'm using vegetable oil but you can use any oil or even soft butter or lard will do the same job too. Right, set the machine away and add the flour a bit at a time until it's all in. Now, as the caption says, wait until the mix comes together before setting your timer away for 12 minutes. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can easily hand knead the dough for the same amount of time. And this is what it looks like after 6 minutes. Notice the sides of the bowl are clean now. Right after the 12 minutes, you should have a beautifully smooth dough. Turn out the dough onto a worktop, knead it for a few seconds then form it into a ball. Now grease a clean bowl with half a teaspoon of oil. Place the dough ball in the bowl and coat it with the oil as shown. Ok, get your bowl covered. I like to use a shower cap for this. These are available in the website shop if you want one. There will be a link in the description box below or you can click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. Now get it into a warm draft free spot. I like to use my oven with just the light bulb on. Now set your timer for 30 minutes. Now this time may vary depending on the temperature of where you're keeping your dough, but you're looking for a doubling in size at this stage. Right, so far so good. After the first quick rise of proof, your dough should have at least doubled in size. Now turn it out onto the workbench, you shouldn't need any flour for this as it's a fairly low hydration dough, 57% if you're interested. Now knock the dough back, that simply means get rid of all the gas out of it. Now get it back into the bowl for its second rise. Cover the bowl again. And now get it back into its warm spot 
and set your timer away, this time for 45 minutes. Now to bake the bread on, you'll need a baking tray and I'm greasing mine with lard, but you can use oil or butter. The dimensions of the tray I'm using are on screen. Right, time to make the tiger topping. And this is a list of the ingredients needed. Most of the ingredients you'll be used to. The only different ones are the rice flour and the sesame oil, but both are readily available in most shops. You can actually make your own rice flour by grinding the rice in a spice grinder and sifting it. And that's what I do. OK, onto the topping. To a small bowl, add the water. Next, add the rice flour. Now add the 2 grams of yeast and the 3 grams of sugar. And then the salt. OK, it's this tablespoon of sesame oil that gives this tiger bread its unique flavour. But if you absolutely can't get hold of sesame oil, any oil will do. But the finished bread won't have that unique flavour. Now, just out of interest, this is my table measuring spoon. It should be around 15 grams, so I'll check it on my jeweler scales. And that is close enough. So for those interested in just weights, a tablespoon of any oil is indeed 15 grams for your recipe. Right, I'll add the oil to the bowl and give it a good mix. Once that's well mixed, cover it with cling film, poke a little hole in the middle to let the gas out and set it aside until needed. Right, time's up on the second rise. And as you can see, it's well risen. It's these two initial proofings that give this bread its fantastic taste and soft light texture on the inside. Now turn it out onto the bench and give it a light dusting of flour and knock it back again as shown. Form it into a ball once again. Now place it in the centre of the prepared baking tray. You can of course form it into an oval shape like my bloomer loaf. I'll leave that up to you. Now sprinkle a little flour over the top of the dough ball to prevent any stickage. And now cover it with a dry lightweight cloth. OK, now get it back into its warm spot for its final rise for 45 minutes. When the final rise is almost up, your tiger topping should be quite active by now. Now give it a quick whisk until it's smooth again. And have a soft pastry brush at the ready. OK, almost done. Once the time's up, carefully place the tray on the workbench. And before you do anything else, preheat your oven to 190 Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit or gas mark 5. And soon as your oven's on, place a pan of hot water on the bottom shelf. Now this will create a steamy atmosphere and make the bread even crispier. OK, on to applying the topping. Remove the proofing cloth and as you can see it's looking fantastic. 
Now take your pastry brush and load it up with the tiger mixture and very gently brush it all over the dough as shown. Now it takes the oven about 10 minutes to heat up so you've got plenty of time to carefully apply this topping. If you find the brush is dragging a bit then stop you must have the wrong measurements but don't worry add a little touch of water until the mixture loosens up a bit and starts to flow easier off the brush. If there's any drips on the tray carefully clean them up with the cloth as shown. Try to keep your work tidy. Right there you go a great work of art. And that's the hardest part of this recipe out of the way. Now get it into the preheated oven and set your timer for 30 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. Ok the 30 minutes are up and I'll have a look at it. And looking at it it could do with a bit more colour so I'll put it back in and give it an extra 2 minutes. And this time it's looking much better so I'll get it out and onto a wire rack and allow it to cool for 20 minutes or so. And as you can see it has the great tiger bread pattern. It's sometimes known as giraffe bread too. I think it looks more like leopard myself. <laughs> but whatever animal it looks like it's delicious. As far as I understand it the pattern comes from the rice flour having less protein than bread flour. Hence less gluten is formed. So it stretches slower than bread dough expands. And that's how it cracks up into this crazy paving pattern. But it's not just the appearance, it's the subtle flavour of the sesame oil and the crispness of the outer coating that's important. Time to give it a try. And as you can hear it's very crispy. And the soft light texture of the bread inside is amazing. That's down to the two first proofings and the smell is out of this world. Right I'll give it a try with some of my homemade butter. And wow that is so good. You've just got to try this one. A wedge of this with homemade broth or beef stew will have everyone's thumbs up guaranteed. And as promised at the beginning here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Thomas Wood, Jorg Depp, John Oakes, Colorado Springs Paintings, Kenneth Hunter, Bundle 68, Derek Brett, Sally Webster, Sandra Oss and Sandy Reese. And there's also one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page and by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So until the next time be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.